All right, joining us in the studio, Hollywood acting coach and best-selling author, Ivana Chobak. What an honor. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming to the show. Well, you're welcome. But, I mean, you are serious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to ask you first, is acting a gift or can I learn it? I think that some people have an innate talent that needs to be, but all talent needs to be honed. Some people don't have the natural talent, but they work so hard that they become really, really great. So it's, I just think, bottom line is if, if it's your dream, follow it. Okay, yeah. follow, it. It, what follow if, it. What if people tell you, my gosh, you can't act at all? That it's time to go to classes and learn how to okay, act. It's, okay. called, it's like anything. Like, someone says, I want to be a doctor. So, well, you haven't gone to training. So you say, go to university and become a doctor. So it's just, it's, it's taking initiative. Okay. It's not just like, things don't, I, I don't know why everybody thinks that acting is somehow just it's some magical. Yes, that it's, it's natural. Not. But no, it's it, it, like everything. There isn't anything that, that has any prestige to it that doesn't require training and study and time to study, to like grow and learn and grow and evolve and learn. It's, it's a process of, uh, of any kind. Okay. All right. Now, were you always an acting coach or at one point in your life you were an actor? Well, I was an actor. I came to Hollywood. With the, with the actor dream, and honestly, I got there after three weeks. I got I booked a movie, okay. and then uh, it took a year later <laughs> before I booked anything else. Okay. But the bottom line was, I found myself um, just naturally being you know driven to to teaching people, and so I'd be on set. And all actors kind of help each other out. So I'd give notes, and they would find that they would give their best performances off my notes. So really? then they started coming to my house. And you didn't study then, huh? It was well, just I natural was, you well, were giving notes? No, no, I was studying. Okay. I think you should always study. Okay. But I was studying. I had a couple different, you know, techniques that I was studying, um, which I found wasn't really effective, so I kept bastardizing it, okay. changing it, yeah. and, and forming it into my own thing. Okay. And, it, it, and it just started becoming its own animal. And as I would talk people through things, they started to come to me. And I said, let's start charging for this. And it got to the point where I had so many people coming to me, people who were starting to build really great careers from, wow. from working with me, that I said, you know what, I don't really want to be an actor. I really love teaching. I just think it's the gift that uh, God gave me. That uh, and, I, and I believe that everybody has a gift. It's up to you to figure out what that is, to explore what your gift is, and then follow your yeah. dream yeah. and go for it. So Anything's you know possible. You are actually a li you're living proof of debunking the quote, if you can't do it, teach it. Or those who can't do it, teach, right? <laughs> You know that I'm going to uh, debunk that. Exactly. I'm debunk that you were the I living was, proof yeah. that, that that's not true. Well, I you know I get offers all the time to, to big acting jobs yeah. in many venues, and, and because I work with directors and writer producers and stuff, but I really I exactly. love teaching. So I say, look, I have students. I will pass along to you to, for those parts you're offering me, and I will coach them. But I don't. I want to be the source, the resource behind people. I love yeah. the nurturing source. When someone becomes like most of these people that that have been named that you're talking about were nobodies when I met yeah. them. Yeah. I was a part of making them the somebodies. They were living out of cars. They were living with groups of eight people. Really? They were living with no money. Brad Pitt had three jobs to support. He had no social life. He supported his acting uh, classes and also my private work together. Yeah. And he was always rehearsing all the time, auditing the classes. He was like immersed in, in, in working and, and being skilled and studying. And, and it wasn't until much, much later that he decided social life was okay to have. Okay. You have to be that tenacious and focused. Are there ever um, oh, students that, is, that you, t you tell them, you're not going to make it, this is not for you? Well, I, you know what, I don't think it's up to me to determine that. I think some people take longer to understand something than others. I think education is something that you can't just say everybody's supposed to learn at the same time okay. um, zone. But so you can't, it's like some people take a shorter time to learn. Some people take a longer time to learn. So it's like I, you just got to keep trying. Again, I, wanna, I, I am a big believer that no matter what age you are, what, uh, what you look like, 
Um, if you're missing a leg, it doesn't matter. If you want to be an actor and you really believe in your, in your talent, keep working on trying to get that study, um, take chances in yeah. the choices that you make, and there's a really good shot, you'll make it. Okay, all right, let's go back to Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. What did Brad Pitt have when you first met him or when he was learning to act mm -hmm. that made him succeed today? You did mention focus, he was tenacious. Mm -hmm. what, what else did he have other than, of course, he was gorgeous? Well, when I first met him, he wasn't all that gorgeous. Really? He was a little, because he was 19, he was a little, you know, had, a little, had the baby fat going on. Okay. And, uh, and he was, it, it was just, there was good instincts. I remember his first scene he did in class, it was uh, uh, from a piece called Tribute. And he's meant to be a virgin, talking to a girl who's definitely not a virgin, she's kind of a hoe. Okay, you know? okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. okay. And uh, so he, she's talking all the sexual stuff, and he's taking this stuff in, talking about things that are really kind of... Um, uh, 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 abstract, like uh, he was talking about school, he was talking yes, about homework, yes, yes. And, but uh, he was thinking all kinds of sexual thoughts, so you really got the truth of what a human being really does. You could be talking about politics, but if you're like somebody and you're attracted to someone, you're going to be thinking about boobs, you're going to yes, be thinking yes, about yes. down there, yeah. you're going to be thinking about like what it's going to feel like when you get in there. Exactly. And, uh, and that's what he was thinking. It was just natural. He had this like natural um, ability to just like go to the darker places, to the more interesting places. And that was his very first scene. He'd never ever done anything before. And how do you take them to these dark places? I mean, you did develop the 12-step acting technique. Mm -hmm. What would be the first in the steps? Well, I think you can't really look at it as a separate thing. It, it kind of works together as a whole to create, to recreate human behavior. Because human behavior isn't a simplistic thought process. Yeah. You're talking about recreating the complications of why we do the things we do, how we negotiate yeah. life, why we do bad things, why we do good things, why we uh, feel the need to hurt somebody, why we feel the need to be a victim sometimes, yeah. why we uh, need to have children, why we don't want to have children. It's so complicated. Yes, but you even said breathing was important. Is breathing? breathing? Yeah. So, oh no, just that's, uh, the, that's just what the, do you teach? That's just to create someone who, who yes. seems like they're alive. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. <laughs> and, and when you're when you're acting like a dead person, that's not recreating real human behavior. But I mean, that's are there, but are there <laughs> exercises? Uh, no, I don't, you don't believe in exercises. Oh, you don't. I believe in taking, um, if you're recreating real human behavior, you do script analysis from a point of view. Is a why a script analysis? Script analysis. Really? Okay. And what you do is you look at the um, what the character wants uh, overall, okay. and then how they negotiate and work getting what they want as the character. Then you find how it duplicates from your own life by personalizing it from a, from a needy place, from a desperate yeah, place. Yeah. From like, I, the more that you really want something, the more you do crazy things to get it. I agree. And there, <laughs> yeah. And therefore, you become. Therefore, you become mannered. You become quirky. You become interesting to yeah. watch. You know. Okay. All right. Here are some of the actors you've worked with. I'll ask you feedback about them. Mm. All right. Okay. Here. Jared Leto. Okay, he is someone that is, he takes chances. He is not somebody who is afraid to look stupid in front of other people. Very, oh, yeah, very yeah. important because, because most actors are so afraid you don't of want to be yeah. Self-conscious? Yeah, self-conscious. Yeah, you can remove it. Yeah, that's yeah, and bad. So like, if Dallas Buyers Club is, is the movie he's up for for an Oscar. Oscar. And he plays a transvestite. Wow. And he and you, you trained him for that? I mean I trained him wow. as an actor. Okay. And so uh, what he does is if, if when you watch the movie, you'll see him I I what I teach is to take um, pain and trauma of your life and use it to fuel your passion and energy okay. to win. To All overcome right. and win. Okay. So instead of uh, feeling sorry for yourself, you go, don't take the pain and self self-destruct. You take the pain and construct. So he's always going after stuff. He's really needing it. Interesting quirks happen okay. out of a result yeah, of it. Yeah. Even the way when he walks away from Matthew McConaughey in one of the scenes, it looks like he's just leaving. But the, but the uh, objective in that moment is follow me. Oh. Follow me. Stop me, want to be with you. I see. It's active that way. I, uh, that's amazing. All right, our next photo. 
Okay, this is good, huh? <laughs> All right, Beyonce, what, Dream Girls? Uh, I th we did Dream Girls, but okay. I thought the more interesting movie we worked on was Cadillac Records, where she oh, played yes, yes, yes. Etta Jane, yeah, exactly, yeah. heroin addict. Yeah, yeah. And I think the most interesting part about her is that she's playing a heroin addict who, and this woman, Beyonce, has never done a drug. I know, and she's so wholesome. And she's so wholesome. So what we do is we look at... How do you do that then? I mean, it's a you... process, but yeah. I mean, this, this was like you know hours and hours and hours of work to make this happen. Yeah. But like to simplify the process, you look at why does someone take heroin? Someone takes heroin because it's a painkiller. Yeah. Why do you need a painkiller? Because you're in pain. So first we have to look at the drug that the that the character she's playing takes why that drug needs to be taken and then we start to explore within beyond we personalize we find within beyonce a pain that become that maybe isn't as big as edda's but we it, i call it taking a fraction and turning it into a okay. hole yeah so, so what we did was we really like magnified some personal pain of her own which of course would be between yeah, yeah, her yeah. um and because uh, people trust me like their therapist yes, this is really yes private that's stuff. the point yeah but the point is we magnified to the point where it became untenable so then i have an exercise in the book on how to uh, actually really feel what it feels like to be on heroin and it totally works no it's really in the book. try it try are it. you serious the book. and it's free and you don't <laughs> get addicted <laughs> you did a process on how i mean yeah. how it would feel to be addicted and and on the drug itself and, and she you, said, and, and, and she, do your actors feel they're on the drug? Oh yeah, oh it's my so God. cool. And With everybody says it totally works. And after really? she did it the first time, she was like so excited. She called Jay Z and she, she said, "Well, I got to call my husband." And she said, uh, "Jay, Jay." This, this, I did it. I'm on, I, I feel like I'm, I'm really on heroin. And the way she was talking, because heroin is like, Ugh. oh, so my So she was God. talking like that <laughs> and talking to him. And she said, I'm so excited. And so it's like, it just works. Watch Cadillac Records. And you okay, really yeah, believe yeah. this woman is on heroin. All right. Okay. Next actor. Mm -hmm. Next actor. Oh, okay. We talked about Brad Pitt. Let's move on to the next. I, I guess you want to keep talking Not about Brad Pitt, right? Everybody next, was, because you Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Okay. There's uh, others. There's others. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Okay, stop. Charlize Theron, who won an Oscar for Monster. Monster. She was always about like she was. She was one of the hardest workers I've ever had in really? terms of just oh, talk about tenacious about her work. She would not only um, always have a scene ready for class. I mean, she would just worked her ass off in class, rehearsed all the time. But she also would call a friend up from class and say, would you do another scene with me? So she was always doubling up and always like figuring out more stuff. So she would always take chances. Um, she, was, she was somebody that was fearless. Really? Fearless. And I met her when she was 19. A 19 year old fearless person, this doesn't exist. Because teenagers, are just walking fear machines yeah yeah and so she was she was uh, i mean there was a no doubt that when you meet someone who's that young who has that kind of fearless energy who says tell me what you want me to do Ivana. i'm, I'm going to do it done yeah